All right, so for whatever reason, the uh, audio on my camera is fucked up and I've been trying to play around with it for like the past 30 minutes, can't figure out what's wrong with it. So it actually cut out the last video that I recorded. Um, so we're just gonna roll with it. I'm shooting on my phone today really quickly. And today I wanna bring you five Facebook marketplace tips that if you implement are going to help you run you know, a better business, scale faster and make more money, okay? And if you stay till the end, I'm gonna give you a sixth bonus tip. Now, I wanted to get a video out for you guys really quickly because I've been like like hardcore into the uh, dropshipping business this month and I really haven't had much time at all to put towards like making videos for you guys. I think I might have made like, I don't know, like five maybe all month. It's probably even less than that. Uh, so usually it's like every other day or every three days. This time it's been like once or twice a week, maybe if I have time, even though that sounds like it's roughly the same. So I don't know, I'm a little rusty. It's been a while since I made a video, but I wanna hit you with some uh, Facebook Marketplace tips here that are really gonna help you grow your business, okay? So these are things that like you might have heard of or you know, chances are you might not have. I guarantee you they'll all help. But if you you know like any of these, obviously give it a thumbs up. I genuinely appreciate it. And I'd like to hear from you too as well. Like I'm sharing five tips, well, six if you get the bonus, uh, that you know I have really kind of anecdotally seen help grow my business. So drop a tip, your best tip down in the comment section. Uh, I'd love to hear other ones if I don't add them to this list, okay? So first one is uh, that message response time I think actually matters, okay? Now this is anecdotal, I don't have any proof, I don't have any like data, I didn't run any split tests, but I have kind of noticed that my sales seem to go up when I'm actually in my, you know, my messages responding to customers relatively quickly, right? It doesn't mean that you have to respond and be sitting there like ready to respond, you know, that minute or like that hour, but it does, I have noticed that like, if I start like ignoring people or start just like, you know, not responding to a bunch of people, Again, this is anecdotal, I don't have any proof of this, but it seems like my sales somewhat go down, right? And just the opposite, if I'm responsive and I'm helping customers, answering their questions, even if they don't ever buy, it seems like my sales, it correlates with like sales slightly going up, right? And this actually makes a lot of sense because, you know, if you look at platforms like eBay or Amazon or even Facebook, like when they're running like advertising, because I used to run a lot of advertising on Facebook, their main goal, their main concern is the customer experience, okay? And so, for example, like if you're a customer searching through Marketplace and you're messaging people and like you never get responses, it's a bad look not only on that seller specifically, which might be you or me, but it's a bad look on Marketplace in general because it doesn't seem that reliable, okay? And so it's not that crazy to assume or, you know, maybe, you know, take a guess, an educated guess that like, Facebook might be potentially, again, this is anecdotal, might be potentially dinging sellers, you know, if their response rate, you know, goes a little bit low or dinging sellers that aren't as responsive and just ignoring customers and giving a slight boost to sellers and their listing specifically, you know, metric wise, if their response rate goes up or if they're helping out customers and stuff like that, okay? So I don't, again, have any proof of this. This is just kind of like something that I've anecdotally seen, like correlates, like when I I'm more responsive, I tend to get more sales that day in the coming days and vice versa. You can take that, you can leave that, do whatever you want with it, but I have noticed that I think message response time actually really matters. And I think, no, I don't still have my mic on, okay. Uh, so the next thing is that editing listings, and this is something I've talked about a million times, but like, if my sales ever go low for like a couple days, I literally go back through like all my past solds or like all the listings that have seemed to get like a lot of views but never sold and I edit them, okay? And so basically what that has done, and I've said this in practically every tip video, is it almost simulates like a new listing or like, you know, Facebook re-ranks that product or brings it to the top of search, almost like you're renewing that product, but instead you're just going in and maybe you're editing a word in the title or you're editing tags, even though you can't edit tags anymore because they took that feature out. Um, you can put tags sometimes depending on your account, you know, when you're actually creating a new product, but then, you know, sometimes depending on your account. But when you're editing past sold products, they don't let you edit tags. They only let you edit a certain things. They don't actually even let you uh, move the pictures anymore around on past sold listings, whereas they used to do that uh, you know, in the past. So I don't think, depending on your account again, because everybody has different features rolled out at different times, you know, edit something. It doesn't matter if it's something in the description. It doesn't matter if it's you know, a picture, if you can move the picture around and split test a different picture that, that is your main image. 
um, you know, edit something in the title, mark the price down slightly or mark the price up slightly, offer free shipping or, you know, mark it down and charge more for shipping, whatever. Try something else. I'm telling you, editing listings, it's one of the simplest things to do. You can also outsource that as well if you don't feel like doing it. Um, and it, it tends to, you know, re-rank your products. I've seen this, you know, obviously anecdotally in my business, like, but I've also seen that they, they give you notifications that like, when you, you know, you'll literally get a notification from Facebook that's like, the since updating X listing, you have gotten X new views on that listing, right? So they're clearly watching that and they, it clearly is something that they give you a boost on and that they're re-ranking and they're, that they're tracking, okay? And there was another point that I was gonna make, but I don't remember what it is. Again, a little rusty on these videos, so we'll just move on to the next one, okay? But just edit your listings, trust me. Um, oh, that the third point to that uh, was, basically that like I've noticed that like if I haven't sold an item in like a while but then I go back and edit that item like I'll sell that item a couple times if not just once potentially in the next day or two so that's like again that's anecdotal but like that's pretty much you know showing you that this works try it out don't take my word for it you will see that it works for you most likely okay the next one is not to post in Facebook dropshipping groups okay uh, you know if you're a youtuber like me there's a couple of them out there obviously you're a target right? Because a lot of people know that you're drop shipping. Okay. So we'll just leave it at that. Okay. But the same thing goes is like, don't post in Facebook drop shipping groups, because if you join Facebook drop shipping groups and you're posting about like how good your sales are, again, you become a target and other people in that drop shipping group, whether they have good sales already and they're just looking for more or they don't have any good sales, it's going to bring attention to you, unnecessary attention to you, which ties me into point number four, which is that you can snipe other sellers on Facebook Marketplace, okay? So if you didn't know, a lot of people do know this already. Obviously, this is a big strategy on eBay. I've created a video on like how to actually snipe eBay sellers, but you don't ever actually have to, and then like reverse engineer that and you know list those products on Facebook Marketplace. But you don't ever have to even go to eBay or go to Amazon or do anything like that. You can stay directly on Facebook Marketplace and there's basically two main ways to do this, okay? So first and foremost, you can search like private label brands on Facebook Marketplace, like for example, or like just typical dropship products. So for example, mainstays, okay? You search mainstays in Facebook Marketplace. You see all the stock images that pop up for mainstays or even some of the review images that pop up for mainstays for like the dropship sellers that are trying to stay under the radar. You find those sellers, you reverse engineer all their top best listings, right? And the way that you can do that is, and this is a lot of big caveat for you guys in this video, try this out, it freaking works. You find, you, you type in the private label brand, you find the seller's listing, you know, drop ship products from Mainstays, for example, from Walmart, right? Then you have to watch their profile for an extended period of time to see which, you know, sometimes it'll literally say sold on some of their listings, which is, you know, freaking great because then you can just list all those really easily. But if it doesn't, you just want to watch their profile. So keep their profile up in a URL window. And then an hour later, or sometimes if you just leave it up overnight, come back in the morning and refresh it, every, you'll see like their last, their last, uh, you know, product image that, that is like the top left of their, of their seller profile. If you refresh it and then there's like five new products right in front of that. Well, there's either one of two things happening there, right? Either one, they listed five new products or two, which is more than likely, or so two, which is more likely than that one is that those, you know, either sold or they made an adjustment and edited those listings. Okay. Doesn't always work. It doesn't always go ahead and, and mean that like, if you list that, it's going to get sales. It works very, very well though, and it gives you a high likelihood that if you find that product, reverse engineer where they're selling that, chances are if you're doing mainstays, it could be Walmart again, right? It's gonna work very, very well, right? So that's Facebook Marketplace sniping, literally by typing in private label brands. The second way ties back into my last point that I made, which is people posting in Facebook groups. You can literally, if somebody posts this in a Facebook group, like, hey, I got 20 sales yesterday, but my sales are down today, or like, hey, you know, just made my first thousand dollar day or something like that. That person's a target. You can literally take their name, search it in Facebook Marketplace. You know, obviously if you can, you, you go on, hold on, little battery thing there. Um, you go on Facebook Marketplace, you can either go like East Coast and move your radius out 500 miles or go on West Coast, move your radius out 500 miles. And then, you know, Texas, move your radius out 500 miles, et cetera, et cetera. Find that person, find their seller profile, and again, watch their listings, snipe their listings, just like I said, okay? So 
Snipe other Facebook marketplace sellers listings. I don't really do this. I've tested it out. I did do it extensively for like a week and it works really, really well. It's just like, I don't have the time to sit there and do that. It takes a lot of time. Like if you're, if you don't have a lot of sales or like if Facebook marketplace is your main thing, then by all means you have the time to do it, right? Or outsource it to a VA, which is maybe something I've thought about doing. Um, but again, I don't have the time to really do it, but like if that's your main thing, then you will have the time. I'm also doing uh, Amazon drop shipping, which scaled exponentially this month. It's been freaking crazy. Uh, I literally ran out of cash flow. I had to put my, my store on vacation mode. It was wild. So like I've been focused a lot on Amazon. I haven't really had a lot of time to do Facebook Marketplace, but Facebook Marketplace has kind of been going on in the background, okay? So more on Amazon and like the results there coming soon uh, if you guys wanna hear that, okay? But to recap, so first and foremost, we had message response time matters, right? That's a metric. It improves the, the, the quality of the experience of Facebook Marketplace customers. Edit your listings, past solds or viewed items that aren't you know selling a lot. Um, don't post in Facebook dropshipping groups. It makes you a target. You can snipe other Facebook Marketplace sellers. Uh, I just gave you two ways that you can do that. The next way is to start a Facebook shop. I literally started a Facebook shop like a week ago. I haven't, again, had a lot of time to try to scale it, but it does make you jump through a lot of hoops. I don't wanna get too, too in depth with it in this video. Maybe I'll make an entire video on how to do it, different ways to potentially scale it. Um, you know, there's, at least to my knowledge, not a lot of ways to bulk upload to Facebook uh, shops right now. There's not a lot of software that you can implement, at least to my knowledge, right now to like kind of scale that quickly. So it seems like I'd have to hire a VA to input manually. Um, not the end of the world, you can do it relatively quickly. I've tested it out, but again, I haven't really gone down that route too, too heavily yet, okay? But a Facebook shop basically means you can be more obscure and people can't snipe your listings as easily because they're not gonna know who you are because it's not tied to like a specific personal profile that they can find very easily, right? So start a Facebook shop. Also, like I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of more integrated stuff that you get access to in Facebook shops that you don't really get access to selling from a personal profile page to marketplace, okay? So Facebook shops, for those of you that don't know, you know, can tie into marketplace, but again, I don't wanna to get too, too in depth with it here. Just start exploring that, it's a game changer, and I'm telling you it's gonna blow up in the future, okay? And the last bonus tip for those of you that stayed, you know, to this point is to get tax exempt. Now, I waited way too long to get tax exempt on a lot of my suppliers, um, mainly because, and I'm sure this is the boat that a lot of you are in, is like, mainly because it seemed difficult, right? Like I try, I got tax exempt because I have a resale certificate in PA. So I got tax exempt like immediately uh, buy, when buying from addresses in PA, like on pretty much all my suppliers. On Amazon, I, like I started to on some suppliers, but again, the process seemed difficult. Same thing for Walmart, right? So start looking into getting tax exempt. It's not as hard as it seems. Do a little bit of research. You can figure it out. For example, on Amazon, like to give you a little tidbit of information of how to make it easier on yourself. And the same goes for Walmart. The same goes for literally any supplier that you're gonna go out there. Unless it's a wholesale supplier, then you can literally just give them your resale certificate and bam, you're tax exempt. Um, so with, for example, like with Amazon, right? You instead of like going through and putting like every single state in it, you're you're going to run into issues and you're not going to necessarily know which states come with issues right and the same thing for walmart or any supplier whether it's home depot ebay whatever okay so you go in just pick like a couple states at a time and cross them off right like pick like three states or two states or five states pick a couple and then when you go through it'll be a lot easier for you to get tax exempt from those states or go back and x one of those states out because you'll be going through at like three states at a time or five states at a time clips and not 50 states or 48 states or whatever it is because then you won't know where the issues arise, right? So if you go through and you get tax exempt for three states, move on to the next three states, right? And slowly you'll see like which states have problems, which states you can get exempt for. And so that way you're not uh, you know, tax exempt for 50 of them, but you're not tax exempt for zero of them either. Maybe you're tax exempt for like 30 or 40 of them, okay? And that will make a massive difference and improve your profit margins drastically in your business and help you with your cash flow, which is something that I really had to focus on this month as you scale, okay? So those are face, uh, five Facebook Marketplace tips that are gonna help you scale your store, make more money. I really hope that they helped. It's really six because I added a bonus in there. Give it a thumbs up if you appreciate the value in today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Really hope you enjoyed that video. If you're brand new to drop shipping, I recommend that you get started with ZDrop. It's a software that'll help you run and scale your entire dropshipping business for just over $10 a month. 
I still use it every single day in my own business and it's a no brainer, okay? It'll make your listing, customer service, order fulfillment, and a number of other things a lot faster and a lot easier, okay? Now, ultimately, the quickest way to get from where you are now to a drop shipping business that's paying you consistently every month is to simply enroll in my Dropship Pro course. Both of those things are linked directly down in the description below. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and feel free to check out some of the other videos that are on this channel on e-commerce, drop shipping, and a number of other things, all right? See you in the next one.